The book a beast. There was once a woman who was very, very cheerful, though she had little to make her so, for she was old and poor and lonely. She lived in a little bit of a cottage and earned a scant living by running errands for her neighbors, getting a bite here, a sup there, as reward for her services. So she made shift to get on, and always look as far and cheery as if she had not a want in the world. Now, one summer evening, as she was trotting, full of smiles as ever, along the high road to her whole world, what did she see but a big black pot lying in the ditch? Goodness me! She cried, that would be just the very thing for me if I only had something to put in it. But I haven't now. Who could have left it in the ditch? And she looked about her expecting the owner would not be far off, but she could see nobody. Maybe there is a hole in it, she went on, and that's why it has been cast away. But it was too fine to put a flower in for my window. So I just take it home with me. And with that, she lifted the lid and looked inside. Mercy me! She cried, fair amazed. If it isn't full of gold pieces, here's luck. And so it was brimful of great gold coins. Well, at first, she simply stood stock still, wondering if she was standing on her head or her heels. Then she began saying, Locks, but I do feel rich. I feel awful rich. After she had said that many times, she began to wonder how she was to get her treasure home. It was too heavy for her to carry it, and she could see no better way than to tie the end of her shawl to it and drag it behind her like a go cart. It will soon be dark, she said to herself as she trotted along. So much the better, the neighbors will not see what I'm bringing home, and I shall have all the night to myself and be able to think what I'll do. May have I'll buy a grand house and to sit by the fire with a cup of tea, and do no work at all like a queen. Or maybe I'll bury it at the garden foot and just keep it a bit in the old china teapot on the chimney piece. Or maybe, goody, goody, I feel that grand and I know myself. But this time she was a bit tired of dragging such a heavy weight and stopping to rest a while, turned to look at her treasure. And lo, it wasn't a pot of gold at all. It was nothing but a lump of silver. She stared at it and dropped her eyes and stared at it again. Well, I never, she said at last, and me thinking it was a pot of gold. I must have been dreaming. But this is luck. Silver is far less trouble, easier to mind, and not so easy stolen. Them gold pieces would have been the death of me. And with this great lump of silver. So she went off again planning what she would do and feeling as lich as lich. Until becoming a bit tired again, she stopped to rest and gave a look round to see if her treasure was safe. And she saw nothing but a great lump of iron. Well, I never, says she again. And I'm mistaking it for silver. I must have been dreaming, but this is luck. It's real convenient. I can't get penny pieces for all I want. And penny pieces are a deal handier for me. 
then you go and save her. Why? As she never has slept a wink for fear of being robbed. But a penny piece comes in useful, and I shall sell that iron for a lot, and be real rich, roaring rich. So, Aunt she trotted full of plans as to how she would spend her penny pieces. Till once more, she stopped to rest and looked round to see her treasure was safe. And this time, she saw nothing but a big stone. Well, I never, she cries full of smiles. And to think I mistook it for iron. I must have been dreaming, but here's luck indeed, and me wanting a stone terrible bad to stick open the gate. Hey, my, but it's a chance for the better. It's a fine thing to have good luck. So all in a hurry to see how the stone was keep the gate open, she trusted off down the hill till she came to her cottage. She unlatched the gate and then turned to unfasten her shawl for the stone which lay on the path behind her. Hey, it was a stone sure enough. There was plenty light to see it laying there, dows and piece of as a stone chute. So she bent over it to unfasten the child end when Oh my! All of a sudden, it gave a jump, a squeal, and in one moment was as big as a haystack. Then it let down for gray leggy skis and drew out two long ears, nourished a great long tail, and drummed off, quicking and squealing and winning and laughing like a naughty, mischievous boy. The old woman stared after it till it was very out of sight. Then she burst out laughing too. Well, she chuckled, I am in luck, quite the luckiest body here in boss. Fancy my seeing the boggy beast all to myself and making myself so free with it too. My goodness, I do feel that I've lifted that grand so she went into her cottage and spent the evening chuckling over her good luck